It's finally here, and honestly, I think some series newcomers have a lot to learn. But whether you're new to the series or not, you should pull up a chair. As always, I'm Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about 10 things you need to know when starting a new game of Resident Evil 7. Starting off at number 10, the first thing you need to know is that no, you don't need to have played the previous games. This is probably one of the most asked questions I get about Resident Evil 7, and a series historically has a big crazy lore filled with all kinds of weird stuff, and honestly, you don't have to really have a grasp on much of that at all. Of course, I would of course say go back and play the original games at least, just to get an idea of the characters here, but this Resident Evil is very, very much far removed from the series, even though it is a numbered entry. This is almost like a standalone soft sort of reboot, while not throwing out the events of the previous games. So don't worry about it going in. There's gonna be some subtle references and things here and there that you're gonna miss if you haven't played the previous games, but other than that, you'll be just fine. And at number nine, let's talk about the difficulty levels. The game starts out giving you the option between easy and normal, and I think you need to choose very carefully because this is a hard game, especially if you're a player who's not used to traditional survival horror gameplay with real, real, strict resource management, you should definitely think carefully. However, I do think normal is a very challenging and very satisfying experience. But if you're really hardcore after you complete the game normally, you unlock Madhouse difficulty. In Madhouse mode, it's even more like traditional Resident Evil. Items and resources are even more scarce. Enemies are way tougher to put down. And there's no traditional checkpoints. The only way you can actually save is by saving at the save points. There's no checkpoints to kind of keep you busy in between. It's an awesome experience, but definitely not one for the faint of heart. And at number eight, this may sound obvious, especially to people who have played these games before, but listen, don't waste your bullets. The bakers are total bullet sponges, and once you get the lay to land, sometimes you'll get killed by them multiple times enough to realize that you can get through a section without necessarily dumping all of your bullets into them. And just in general, as you'll play, pay attention because you'll get to know which enemies you can skip past and save precious bullets for. Now listen to me, never ever use precious ammo like grenade launcher stuff, or even enhanced handgun ammo or flamer ammo on standard molded enemies because trust me, you're gonna need it later. If you do unfortunately have to use ammo on the molded, and you will at times because there's a lot of confrontations in this game, you better make those bullets count. Target specific body parts. While the head is always usually the easiest best bet, it can be hard to hit at times. And sometimes these things move kind of fast. So using two bullets or so on a leg can actually slow one down and possibly save you seconds and save your life. And at number seven, since Resident Evil 7 is very much a true survival horror game, the name of the game is definitely Inventory Management. Get used to it. If it's not something you're into, if you don't like storing your items in crates and using limited inventory slots, you better just walk away because Resident Evil 7, that is basically the whole point of the game. This is a basic tip, but one that a lot of people don't pick up on. Always keep at least one or ideally two inventory slots open all the time. There's gonna be so many things out in the world that you're going to be picking up from very much needed resources that you can combine into health or bullets, but also also, of course, key quest and puzzle items that you are absolutely going to need. Now, however, you should also use those storage crates to your advantage. If you think you've unlocked everything with a key, or you've at least come close to unlocking everything with said key, store it in the box for a while and give yourself a precious slot. And at number six, master those controls quickly. Quick turns and block guarding will actually save your life. The classic Resident Evil survival horror quick turnaround is still as useful as ever. While it is a little bit more disorienting in first person, it's still the best way to immediately turn around and run away from an enemy because you're gonna need to do that sometimes. As for guarding, this is a new feature to Resident Evil, but it is very important. Watch for an enemy's animation to signal an attack. Usually they'll telegraph their attack pretty easily. And then you have to hold the guard button to essentially block the attack and save yourself some health. The guard block, if timed right, does actually muffle a significant amount of the attack and you won't lose a lot of health. It will stagger you for a second, but it's almost always going to be the best thing to do in a bad situation. And it's something that you can find yourself forgetting about in a moment of panic. Just always keep it in mind though. And at number five, Resident Evil 7 handles its doors very differently than the original games. Always close doors behind you. All you have to do is tap the interact button when pointing at a door to automatically start to shut it. And you're going to need to do this because this is going to save your life because dumb enemies can't get through doors. Definitely practice running through a door, quick turning around and automatically shutting it in the earlier stages because later in the game, you're gonna be running for your life and slamming these doors shut right behind you with enemies right on your tail. That kind of leads me to my next point with number four, don't be afraid to cheese a little bit. This is a Resident Evil game, it's a survival horror game, and if you're low on resources and you're really trying to save, don't be afraid to, like I said earlier, run past enemies, but also use that knife to your advantage. It's definitely grindy and it takes a long time to kill enemies, but it's also a good way to finish off a weakened or downed enemy and save some bullets. Don't be afraid to swing your knife a little bit, turn around, run away, hide around a corner, and then come back after you recovered. A lot of the molded do have a tendency to give up chasing you pretty quickly, but don't always rely on that because 
because they can be a little unpredictable. If you're really struggling, sometimes you can actually try and trap them in between doorways and start whittling their health down that way. If you really wanna cheese things, it can be done. And at number three, make sure you save, hold on to, and use those antique coins. It'll take a minute for you to come across where you actually use them, but once you finally do, you'll be very glad you have them. Even as you're picking them up early in your adventure, just throw them in your crate because you can access them later. You don't need to use up inventory space for them anytime soon. And the place where you do spend these coins has a storage crate right next to it. What these coins do is buy you different upgrades and even a special weapon if you save up enough. These coins are hard to come by, so take your time and slowly explore the environment because you're gonna get an upgrade to reload speed and health that you're going to absolutely, absolutely want to have later in the game. You cannot miss that, do you understand me? And at number two, speaking of looking around your environment carefully, weapons are missable, so be careful. Always take the time to fully explore your environment and figure everything out because you could be missing out on a potentially huge and important weapon that you're gonna need later in the game. For example, here's a quick tip. When you get the scorpion key, immediately go back and use it on the door to grandma's room to get the broken shotgun. From there, you can do the classic Resident Evil switcheroo that I'm not gonna spoil in the main hall. Because if for some reason you miss that and you don't do that and you're going through the game without a shotgun, you're fucked, dude. And at number one, speaking of backtrack, Let's talk about that. It's very important because every single ingredient and ammunition and item and means of survival is absolutely, absolutely necessary. You're gonna be wanting to find all the ingredients to constantly be combining items to always have health and ammo stocked because it's in really short supply, obviously. Also, don't be afraid to use the psychostimulant drugs when you find them. This new drug temporarily gives you special sight that highlights any items you can possibly grab in the environment. This is very useful, especially when you've killed all the enemies around you and you wanna fully explore an entire area and get every little nook and cranny and every item, you're definitely gonna wanna use that drug. Don't bother wasting these items when you're busy running away from monsters and stuff because you're just gonna waste it and it doesn't last that long. But once things quiet down, pop those drugs and scavenge as much as you possibly can. Because like I said, it's not an easy game and you're gonna need every single thing you can to survive. So guys, those are 10 things you need to know when starting a new game of Resident Evil 7. It is a very fun and challenging game, and if you got more tips for newcomers, I'm looking forward to hearing. If you guys have anything down in the comments, let everybody know. If there's some secret item you came across or some weird thing that no one else really seems to have had or I didn't cover, let me know. Let's talk about it. If you have any other questions, I'll be down in the comments, and I'll also be on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Jake Baldino as well. If you did learn a thing or two, or maybe you're pumped about playing this game, clicking the like button helps us out a ton. And if newcomers subscribe, it's a good idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.